the more that these guys fall started, I actually got more relaxed. You know, so again, it's it's. I think it's always really? been my innate ability to focus, uh, and my innate ability to, to be very disciplined, and also to not care about what's happening with the lane right over next to me. Uh, Canada was known as participants. I mean, we are nice people. We go in there, and it's uh, kumbaya and beautiful and all of those things. And 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 I was the guy that um, I was a fierce competitor. I was the, I was you know essentially I was the Michael Jordan. Track and field is like boxing. I mean. Lennox Lewis and a couple other really uh, great uh, uh, boxing champions are, are, are very close friends of mine. Mm -hmm. And I always laugh with them because I'm, I'm like, hey man, uh, you know, the 100 meters is really boxing, but I'm not fighting one guy. I'm fighting like seven guys like every day. I'm gonna give you guys a 10 to 15 meter lead. And if we don't win goal, I'm fighting you guys on the track. Straight up. And I was dead serious. You weren't joking. I was yeah. not joking. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely not. Welcome to the Evolution of Leaders podcast. My name is Darwin Lee, and I am a coach and speaker. I'm the founder of the Evolution of Leaders. On this podcast, I'm interested in exploring the traits, habits, or behaviors that set apart elite performers through their stories and in their own words. Today, I have a very special interview. The fastest man in the world and the GOAT for many years, Donovan Bailey, also a world record holder in the 100 meter. Just a wealth of information, very endearing, off camera and on, very genuine, an amazing interviewee. He's different than pretty much all the others I've interviewed who are all amazing in their own way, but for him, just you can feel the, the oozing, the great confidence that comes from from deep inside of him and, and super straightforward. He's unafraid to speak his mind and listen to how he changed the mindset of the entire team, which, which is incredible and doesn't hold back, but also very caring. And this also has an effect on the track team and, and speaks to him as a leader and, and a teammate. And, and the effect on his teammates, his friends is undeniable too. When, when we look back to the 96 Olympics, we often forget about the Atlanta bombing during those games. And, and I'd forgotten about that until until I was doing the research in preparation. But listen to how he navigated that and, and, and his ability to relax and focus at the proper times, at the most important times. And mm -hmm. and it, it really is amazing, that, that ability. We can all learn something from him uh, in, in that regard. And just what led to his success also is just being coachable and listen to how he he wants to be surrounded by the very smartest people in the room but he has his own take on it in, in a way that that really is good and, and, and endearing in its own way and so I, I hope you get a lot out of this interview as much as i enjoyed conducting it hello everyone this is darwin and i have a very special guest today my hope after listening to this podcast is that you will learn something about excellence because my guest today is Donovan Bailey. He is one of the greatest of all time, certainly the GOAT for many years, two-time Olympic champion, three-time world champion, two-time world record holder, the fastest top speed ever recorded in history at 27.07 .07 miles per hour, only surpassed by Usain Bolt, now giving back in cancer, Alzheimer's research, research, building schools, big brothers, big sisters. He's doing everything, the legendary Donovan Bailey. Mr. Bailey, how are you today, sir? I like that. You're pretty excitable, man. This is great. You know, listen, it's um, it's awesome to be here today, and it's uh, it, I'm looking forward to speaking to you, and I'm I'm in good spirits today. Awesome, great to hear. Now, Donovan, to make a national team is one thing; to do it in the hundred meter is another. How many people run? It's hundreds of thousands. To, to, to be an Olympian is yet another thing. Olympic champion is a thing, but then you're a world record holder on top of that. And, and you did something that no human had ever done before. And this is a question that very few people on earth can answer. And you're one of them. What is it about you that allowed you to forge that path that no person, no human had ever gone before? What is it about the mindset that allowed you to do that? Well, I, you know, I can only contribute that to, to my parents and, and to my upbringing. Um, my, my parents are Jamaican. I was born in Jamaica. Uh, and, and, um, and I think that, uh, you know, from a very young age, my, my mom and my dad always said I could do anything I wanted to do. And uh, there was no limits to what it is I could achieve. Uh, so, uh, you know, my ability to focus and also to work hard and to be very disciplined 
um, you know, is, is something that I learned very young. And, and, uh, and so when I set out to, to, um, to compete and, and when I set out to, to start training and take track seriously, then, um, I, I mean, I knew I was blessed with, uh, great, uh, God-given gifts, but, but I also knew that, um, I had, and I had the work ethic, uh, but after I got to the team, the coaches and all of that training partners, uh, you know, I recognized that I had the innate ability to be focused and to be disciplined and put the work in. Uh, so at some point in my life that there should be an expectations that I, I, I was going to do some, some things that no one had done before. I mean, I didn't know what it was, but I mean, I knew that uh, I was capable of doing that. And I certainly had the support from a very young age. Wow. Amazing. And at the 96 Olympics, you win, you crown the fastest man on earth and in history. And, and during that race, there's more kind of about your mindset that is revealed there. Linford Christie false starts, Atta Bolden false starts, Christie dis- disqualified again for false starting. And, and there's a bit of a, an argument there. And you and the other competitors, you know, come out of the blocks, but it seems to me, you know, obviously that I, for for a normal person, that would have thrown them off, I think. But for you, it it, it didn't seem like it it had that effect. And so there's something else, of, you know, about focus or poise or maybe a self belief. And I'm wondering if you can um, talk us through that. My God, listen, that was uh, you know, funny enough, um, the false start episode in Atlanta. It, it was the reason why. Um, the entire, I mean, our entire sport, so track and field worldwide, changed the rules. Yeah, uh, yeah. I knew that, um, you know, I, I knew coming into the Olympic Games, I'm an, I was a reigning world champion. Yeah. And I knew that Linford was going to try and get out. Otto is always a pretty good, consistent starter. Yeah. Um, you know, but, but I also knew that um, because I've been doing it all year, I, I mean, I have terrible starts, but I just relax. Um, you know, stay, uh, you know, kind of stay in uh, my path and, and, and think about, um, uh, you know, the three transitions that I need to go through in my race. Yeah. So, I mean, I, I understood what I needed to do. It was, but, but certainly it was, I knew that Atlanta was for me to lose. And so uh, if I stayed relaxed, I mean, I'd, I'd already done all the work. Remember Darwin, that yeah. 12 hours before that, there was a bombing in Atlanta. And I yeah. think funny enough, a lot of people forget about that. So 12 hours, I think it's 12 or, uh, twelve or so hours uh, before the 100 meter finals, there was a bombing. Um, we were on, unsh- first of all, we didn't know the damage. We didn't know uh, if people were injured or died. Um, th- there was called that the Olympics was going to be canceled. Yeah. You know, so imagine that, I, you know, I'm at the Olympic Games, I go through two rounds. I go through the heats. I go to the quarterfinals, I go home, um, eat, uh, watch TV, get a massage, go to sleep, wake up in the morning and there's a bombing. So that's how my day started. So, uh, you know, by the time, you know, uh, you know, but I, I mean, I was, I was fully protected. Uh, you know, I had six or so RCMP officers with me at all times. And, uh, you know, so by the time I got to the track for the quarterfinals and the finals, you know, really, I, I was so focused, and 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 ultimately, uh, at the first fall, at the first fall starts, I, I really just wanted to to kind of get the race over with. And 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 the more that these guys fall started, I actually got more relaxed. You know, so again, it's it's. I think it's always really? been my innate ability to focus, uh, and my innate ability to to be very disciplined, and also to not care about what's happening with the lane right over next to me. So it really didn't bother me what was going on with any one of my competitors. And, and frankly, I was as comfortable as sitting in my living room watching TV. You know, really? so the finals, the finals to me was, um, you know, I, I, I had done all the work. I, I, and I was also dealing with an injury, which a lot of people d- d- didn't really. I think that then we, we're talking more about it now or have spoken more about it. Um, I tore my left adductor in, in France um, a few weeks before that. Uh, and uh, and Mark Lindsay uh, and his magic hands had gotten me back to to uh, you know to 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 good enough to compete, um, and so uh, you know my focus has always been. I mean, I've been uh, Dan always says I have uh, probably 
the greatest ability to compartmentalize things of any athlete he's ever known. And he's certainly known some greats. And um, so, so sitting uh, in the blocks, I mean, my responsibility was to, you know, kind of, you know, every time it's almost like a, uh, there's a calm over me and I was listening to Dan in my head, all the things that we had done before. So, you know, it was, it was a time for me just to relax and, and, and um, get out of the blocks, not panic uh, because I could have done that and, and messed up real bad, but uh, to get out of the blocks, not panic, run my race. If I ran my race the way I was supposed to, uh, Dan thought I should have ran um, high nine six, maybe nine seventy one, um, but uh, you know I did what I did and and I still broke the world record. So you did. You know, it's, so I'm I'm happy about that. And and during the race and and we'll flush it up as we talk here. You also uh, you know coming out of the blocks, you were a little bit behind, and it, it also speaks to probably your ability to focus. But here you must know that you're slightly behind, or maybe you don't if you're not paying attention to the other lanes, but what goes through your mind to, to reset or to, uh, you know, focus on your race plan or relax or whatever? Do you go through, uh, if we can, if we can kind of find out this, the secret sauce here, what is it that you did or do that, that we might be able to learn something from? Well, one, I mean, I think that the thing that I learned, uh, one of the things that we do in practice is 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 going through crazy monotonous training it's boring and i mean dan will tell you if you ever speak to him or or even glenroy well actually any of the guys i actually hate training uh because it's boring it's monotonous but it's those things that um you think about in those situations i mean it's it's almost like listening if you're a basketball fan it's like listening to uh when people talk about uh stefan curry and he's and he goes to practice and he's shooting a hundred threes, right? Yeah. So yeah. we go through the same thing in track and field. I mean, you know, I, 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 you know, a hundred times I'll go through, I'll run thirty meters, and it's thirty meters outside the blocks. I mean, out of the blocks, and 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 uh, you know, understanding my drive phase, relaxing, not worrying about anyone around me. And I think that the you know what you see there is that I was the sixth man out of the blocks, and my responsibility was not to panic. I mean, it, it's, if you panic, it's over for you. Uh, you know, in the hundred meters, you have, you have one one thousandth of one second to make a possible mistake, correct that possible mistake, and then go on. I mean, so yeah. they're really, they're, you have nanoseconds. And, and so um, I got out of the blocks. I knew I had a terrible start. Yeah. Uh, but I also was confident in my top speed and that no other human being had ever achieved that. Um, so, uh, you know, I, I, my responsibility then was to just get back, not panic, get back in, in, in my drive phase, uh, you know, and, and uh, you know, and go through the motions, um, you know, and through the cycles of, of, the, of the actual 100 meter race. So, um, you know, I got out, it was a terrible start. Yeah, but my job was then to relax. I took a deep breath in and, and, uh, and, and you know, obviously pumping my arms, yeah. underst understanding where my shin angle was uh, as I'm driving uh, to get the top speed. And, uh, you know, you saw the rest. So is you're, you're, it sounds like you're really relying on your training and, and your process. And then that just kind of takes over and that's what you're focused on. Well, my ability has always been, and I always say this to people, I mean, it, you know, uh, there, there's not a lot of people that's coachable. And I, I am not a coach because I just don't have the patience to deal with someone who can't listen. Um, and so Dan has always been a, an incredible provider of information as to exactly what you need to do in a 100 meters. He's one of the best, you know, uh, you know biomechanics guy in the history of the world. So um, you know, I, I listen to precisely every single thing that he does and, uh -huh. and, every, and everything, every, every single thing that he says. So, so my ability to process, I didn't, I didn't really need to take long. I mean, uh, Dan and I always spoke about uh, ensuring that uh, I am prepared to learn. So uh, if, I'm, if I'm at home and, uh, you know, there's something else happening there, I didn't sleep well or had a nightmare or whatever, he's like, dude, don't show up here unless you're like a sponge. 
So I'm always someone who learns a lot and, 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 and is constantly a student. So Dan, Dan knew that I'm not really gonna make a lot of mistakes in a race. I mean, frankly, in probably all of the 100 meters I've ever ran in my life, I can think of only one that I made a horrible mistake. But, uh, but uh, yeah, I, I'm always someone who have been able to process information uh, when it's given to me by my coach and also understand that this is not a team sport, it's singular. So if I screw up, I'm the one that's going to be like really pissed off at myself. So, so, um, so the hundred meters, I mean, it was my first time at the Olympic games and I'm like, yeah. I'm, I'm number one in the world and I'm going to make this thing count for me. So, yeah. So uh, Dan has always been an, an incredible provider of information and I've always been able to process it because I've always come to practice wanting to learn. And obviously that's the individual 100 meter, but also you want a gold in, in the relay. And, uh, and, and that's obviously a, a team dynamic there. And, and the, the relay team has, you know, maybe not the best, uh, the heats going through. And it, it turns out that Carlton is, is Richard Carlton is, is not maybe perhaps running the best, but then someone named Robert Esme, uh, who we both spoken to as well, shows a certain hunger and an ability and steps in and fills that void very well. And I just wanted to play a clip of uh, our talk and, and a clip and, and get your take and also on, on Robert, uh, because okay. I think it's interesting uh, what, what you see, what, what the team sees from him. So, so here it is here. I want them to go back to the area of fun. And that's part of the haircut. Because I know when they can see the haircut, I know they're going to laugh. I know Donovan's going to call me a clown and slap me as usual, right? <laughs> but although he may do that, on my mind, it's where I wanted him. Because oh. I saw the fun piece and the relaxed piece that I'm looking for. I saw the smile on Glenroy's face. Like, this guy has gone on another level. I saw Bruni laughing. He's on another level. At that moment, that was the reaction I'm looking for. Because I want it to feel like we're on the playground at school when we're playing tag. And it's... <laughs> right. You said I'd call him a clown and slap him on the back of his head, right? <laughs> yeah. And he meant that in an endearing way. Uh, absolutely, but, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. A I and yeah, yeah, yeah. But there's something about Robert Esme that the team notices uh, showing a hunger or an ability and he steps in and he does a really good job. And obviously the team uh, wins gold. And, and what, when you look back and, and, and you, you, you see kind of what Robert did to in, in such, such a, an atmosphere when the team had not been running well. And uh, then to do that in, in the whole dynamic of, of uh, you know, everything that had happened as well. Uh, Glenn Roy had had a personal uh, disappointment in the 100 and, and nearly had left the Olympics and Bruni had had a disappointing uh, Olympics and he, he was down for a while. And then Robert Esme comes in uh, for Carlton. Just uh, what did the team, the team atmosphere that the teamwork look like headed into uh, this, uh, the final? Well, um, one, uh, well, let me, let me clarify a few things. One, when I, when I, for, uh, for, as the captain of the team and the lead of the team, the very first thing I had to do, and, and this happened in 19, this happened two years before the Olympic Games. I had to change the mindset and the attitude of all of those guys. And act, frankly, the entire track team. Uh, Canada was known as participants. I mean, we are nice people. We go in there and it's uh, kumbaya and beautiful and all of those things. And, and, and I was the guy that, um, I was a fierce competitor. I was, the, I was, you know, essentially I was the Michael Jordan. I mean, I was a guy that yep. um, I was going to come in and I was going to lay it down in, in the hundred meters. I know what my personal ability was, but I think that um, I was, I, you know, I've been very hard on those guys, very hard on those guys because I had huge expectations. And, and I told those guys that, um, you know, if you're showing up and you're not prepared to run, then we'll find someone else. You know, mm -hmm. uh, you know, to replace you. That's just what it is. I mean, you know, so we had won Commonwealth Games. So we're the number one team in the, in the world in 94. 95, we won the world championships. You know, coming into Atlanta, I mean, we, we, weren't, we weren't bad. We were, we were actually running quite good um, as a team. Um, 
you know, certainly Glenroy, Glenroy had, you know, definitely some off track issues that he was dealing with. And my responsibility was to get him focused and get him ready and understand that this is the greatest time of his life and he needs to get that organized. Carlton had a long season at Clemson. So him getting a hamstring tear was probably not a surprise. Uh, oh. You know, at the end of the day, it really wasn't because he had a very long season coming from Clemson. Uh, Bruni probably had a mental block again. Bruni always um, sometimes lose focus uh, under pressure. Um, he, he tends to focus to veer off to other things. You know, so so I knew what my job was at the Olympic Games individually. I knew that I was going to go out there and I was going to do what I was going to do. Yeah. But I also knew that, um, you know, uh, in the in the first round, I mean, I remember having a conversation with Bruni and, and, and for me saying to him, uh, we need to shorten... Um, well, Carlton ran well. Uh, Glenroy is always still on the backstretch. Glenroy, probably one of the best sprinters Canada ever had that he never recorded a time that he's in there. I mean, Glenroy should, should have been a, a sub-10 guy every time he ran. But mm. Glenroy is going to always run well on the backstretch. Uh, Bruni got the baton, maintained, uh, maintained uh, the lead in the, in the heats. Uh, but I, but I'd saw, I also had said to him we had to shorten, shorten our, um, our receiving zone because I just come off the hundred meters and again, I'm on a different level. I'm on a different level. So, yeah, I mean, yeah. again, when I took off, I recognized that Bruni wasn't going to catch me. So I saw the receiving zone coming up and I just slowed down. I slowed down just enough to get the baton. I mean, I think a lot of people were panicking. I mean, yeah. I felt I was in full control of that because if I'm the outgoing runner and Bruni's coming in, I can always slow down to receive the baton. And I have to be so aware of everything else that's going on. Um, but, uh, but when we got, so, but I got the stick, we got through, uh, Bruni knew now that he had to shorten it because again, I, you know, I just ran the fastest time in the history of the planet. Um, you know, so, so going into the finals and, and Robert was, you know, chopping at the bits to come out. I mean, realistically, all I wanted Robert to do was to come out and, and, and beat, um, John Drummond, because if he beat John Drummond, then we are about to break the world record. Right. Uh, but I recognize it. if it's his motivation to save his head, I thought that was kind of silly. Um, I was still very serious uh, because no matter what he says and, and or, or what he looked like, he had a leg to run. And 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 there is the the the, the baton is the most fragile thing in the history, uh, you know, of anything. If you are if if if, if this is this is the 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 thing. Uh, that if you don't exchange it, there's no need to continue running. So I wanted him to have a good start, and I wanted him to beat John Drummond. Now, uh, John Drummond put a definitely a big beating on him in the in the in the in the in the um, in the first in the in the first on the first leg. But again, uh, you know, Glenroy Glenroy uh, you know made it up uh, on the backstretch. Uh, Bruni maintained it, and then I opened it up again. So. There was, you know, the, the, you know, I think the dynamics of our team, everyone can tell their own personal story, but I can tell you what the story is. And, and because I'm standing on the track on the fourth leg and I'm seeing every single thing that's happening, you know, so at the end of the day, um, completely elated, um, the five guys that were part of that squad um, should be recognized as the greatest team in the history of Canada. We're the only we're the only team in, across any sport that for six years in a row, we were the number one team uh, yeah. on the planet. And, yeah. and again, I mean, whatever Robert did, uh, yeah, I, was, I, I thought it was a little silly. Um, I don't know if I laugh, but I, I thought it was a little silly. But, but, I mean, again, his responsibility was I, I wanted him to go out and run 10-3 out of the blocks and give it to Glenroy, uh, you know, where Glenroy could, we know that Glenroy is going to hold that thing like an egg. And he's going to hum down that backstretch and give it to Bruni. Uh, you know, so we did that. I mean, and, and, you know, when I meet up with the guys or when we have a conversation, one of the incredible things that we have today is that we can sit and laugh and talk and think about the incredible memories uh, because we've, we, we've, we, we've done something and we've made something of ourselves uh, that we can share with um, Canadians and the world of track and field uh, and the world of the of Olympic sports 
uh, for for eternity. And 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 so uh, we can sit and laugh about anything right now. But you know, my um, I guess uh, my my leadership ways and um, and and the fact that I had expectations of all these guys have allowed all of us now to celebrate um, you know some incredible achievements. And, and 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 it's well known that I mean you're not afraid to challenge and uh, to to push and, and get in faces whatever the phrase might be, right. and, and and as we know it paid off and I'm sure you've seen this you know umpteen times but when 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 you look at the, the race the four by one hundred what what goes through uh, your memory what 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 do you remember about that so it's coming around and you're going to Glenroy and, and what are you thinking at these moments. Well, I mean, you know, it's funny. Every time I actually see the race, I always say, I always think, why couldn't Glenn Roy run a hundred meters like that? Oh. Like, I realize you need to put a stick in his hand. No, but but I'm telling you, I mean, that that's okay. again, it's a personal thing of what I've wanted for Glenn Roy because because yeah. we're it's a brotherhood, and and I am one of four boys, and I'm one of five boys in my family. So so I've always been very hard on my on my brothers. I grew up that way. You know, um, you know, so I've always been hard with these guys. So, yes, I mean, I see Glenn Roy and see how detailed he is and how precise he is and how fantastic his mechanics are. Uh, but when I when, obviously when I when I when I remove myself from it and I can talk about it as a team, you know, I, I, I again, I think about the I think about the fact that, you know, uh, you know, uh, I achieved something personally uh, that I'm still compared with. The, the fastest human beings that ever uh, that ever lived on this planet, and 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 uh, and and the fact that we're and, and a gold medalist. But when I look at the team, I'm like, it's the same thing. And it's always it's always incredible when you win with a team. Uh, you know, sometimes when I look at whether I look at uh, basketball or baseball or football or, or hockey or whatever, you kind of see teammates, and it's amazing when you win by yourself. Yeah. but you're on a podium by yourself. Now, when you win as a team, it's so incredible because again, you know, uh, Bruni Surin would not be Bruni Surin if he didn't win a gold medal. Uh, Robert Esme, you would never speak to Robert if he wasn't a gold medalist and a champion. And Glenor is the same and Carlton is the yeah. same. And, and so when I look at the race, I'm like, yeah, we did that. We did that. And the only thing that we can do, one, is help mentor uh, the young kids that are up right now and, and you know, the Canadian team right now with Aaron and Andre and, you know, Jerome and a few others, um, you know, these guys have the potential, they have the potential. And what we can do is, uh, is, you know, let them know that, listen, there's a seat at the table in the hall of fame, man. And you need to get out and do your thing. I mean, you know, individually, I'm saying the same thing to them. Uh, but as a team, it's so incredible. It's, it's absolutely so incredible to look at and understand that you've celebrated victory at the highest level, and to be serenaded by your national anthem in front of the planet where the entire planet is watching. I mean, it's one of the few sports in the world that the entire planet is watching. Uh, right. and, and so, and so when I look at it, you know, and I look at the team, I kind of go, yeah, this is, it's so good. I mean, I, that after that race was done, I actually went out and I made, I, I you know, the, the big like NFL uh, at the time, the NFL or, 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 uh, or, uh, Major League Baseball, those big diamond rings. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. Actually, I actually bought the, the entire team that. I mean, as the captain, I went out and I, with Justin's Canada and, and I bought them all. I bought like everyone on the team, including the staff, got a ring from me. Amazing. Amazing. Real, real teamwork. And th there's, there's something else that, that speaks to what you're talking about here, which is about uh, teamwork, because on the track, your 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 fierce competitors, and you're competing for spots uh, on the team, and then and then for medals, and yet you're also a, a very good teammate and, and a friend and supporter for for Glenroy. And, and there's a clip when I when I spoke to him, and I wanted to get your take on this too, um, and just to hear what what Glenroy had went through and, and kind of your your impact on him at, at at the time. So this is this is before, right. really really hard to get ready. I have won medals in the in the relay. I wanted I wanted to make the Olympic final in Atlanta. I didn't winning a medal, I knew that was going to be a long shot in the 100 meters, but to make the final, I thought it was something I was capable of doing. I trained all year for it. Got to Atlanta, things leading up to that, um, I was I was married, my marriage fell apart. I was 
I went to the trials in, in, in Montreal. I was low. I was the lowest I'd ever been. Um, I relied on my teammates, Donovan. Um, Donovan was huge in, in this moment. He really helped keep me on track, pick me up during the, the trials. I was able to finish third in 100, make, make the 100-meter uh, the squad for the Olympics. When I got to the Olympic Games, Again, the focus continued, and that was going to be to make it to the final. That was, that was it. Uh, went through the heats. That was okay. Went through the quarterfinal and finished. I want to say I was maybe fifth in the quarterfinal. I was in the race there with Otto Bolden and did not advance. I and, and he goes on to tell the story of, of kind of how the, the, the Olympics individually didn't go well for him and, and you know, went in his room and, and, and almost didn't come back out for the relay and almost left, but you'd helped him before that through a very difficult period. Although your competitors, although you're competing in some ways for the same thing, and yet you were a very good teammate. And that's an interesting dynamic there because you're, as you say, you're the captain and you're the leader and the whole world knows you. And at the same time, you're, you're a good teammate to someone who's competing against you in some way. And I wanted to ask you what, what, what that was like for you. Wow. Well, you know what? Uh, not often. The, the, I mean, sometimes you forget things. I mean, I, I think that um, things that are naturally me, um, I don't. I don't think about it as doing good things. I mean, I, okay. I, we're we're in a place right now, Darwin, where a lot of people are talking about mental health. Yeah. And 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 again, it, it and it's great that we can have that discussion. Now, I understood one that personally. I was going to be ready for Atlanta. Glenroy is also my training partner. And I understood a lot of the other things that was going on. I mean, I hear the dynamic and I also see him. We train every single day. So I know when he's happy, you know, when someone is down, you know, so I knew going in to, I mean, you, going in, like think like track and field is like boxing. I mean, Lennox Lewis and a couple other really uh, great uh uh, boxing champion are, are, are very close friends of mine. Mm -hmm. And I always laugh with them because I'm, I'm like, hey, man, uh, you know, the 100 meters is really boxing, but I'm not fighting one guy. I'm fighting like seven guys like every day or yeah, every yeah. weekend or whatever. Mm -hmm. So Glenroy, I mean, obviously, like you have to understand the dynamics of a brotherhood. Um, with a relay team, I am out there and all of those guys want to kill me, right? And then... I have to beat them and then I have to turn around and go hug them and bring them all together back in a camp <laughs> yeah. where everybody is happy and everyone is satisfied with what it is that they're going to do. Now I knew that Glenn was going through some stuff, but it's my job as it was my job as a leader to go and sit down and hug them and go sit down and have a conversation with them and go tell them, you know, how much, you know, one, I love them or I respect them and we need them. And the fact is that there's an opportunity for a goal that he, he himself has been working his ass off for, you know, and, and I think that sometimes people don't, people don't think about those things. I mean, this is not the first time I've done it to teammates. I mean, it's not something that I, I write in my diary at the time or it's not, I mean, I will go out of my way to go and help teammates, whether or not I'm going to help them pay their rent or, or get them into a track meet or get them a better agent or get them a better deal, uh, you know, a shoe deal. I mean, these are normal, natural things that I would do as a leader. But Glenroy, Glenroy and I have a, have a, have a, have a great, um, you know, relationship. And, and yeah, at the time I knew he was going through some things. And, and, and so my responsibility really was to get in there and let him know that I'm his brother, uh, that we, we had been working our asses off uh, and, and he should not squander that. So, so I'm very happy that one, Glenroy got through. We, you know, he 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 probably wanted to make the finals in 100, but he didn't. I knew that he was going to, again, when you look at the relay, you can think about what Glenroy just said, right? Or what Glenroy had said to you in the past. I mean, Glenroy was so focused. And, and had he ran that race, then Glenroy would have been in the finals. Frankly, Glenroy would have been way up in the finals uh, with me. Glenroy might have been on the podium with me if he, if he ran that race that he ran on that back stretch, uh, uh, that day. but, but, uh, but yeah, but the G man and I, um, you know, at the end of the day, I mean, I always tell him, I always look at him. I'm like, dude, one of the most talented guys I know, one of the smartest guys I know, one of, one of the hardest working guys that I know. 
Uh, but yeah, I mean, I was, I've, I've, I've always been there for those guys. I'm there for those guys today. I mean, I, I can pick up the phone and call Robert to just find out what he's doing. I talk to Carlton very often. I talk to Bruni often. I talk to Glenn Roy often. I just want to make sure that, you know, we're all in that same space where if you need help, whatever that help might be, mental, psychological, physical, like whatever it is, uh, we're there. Uh, we're a team for life and, you know, and, and still as the guy that, um, that is known more than more than all of them. Um, you know, I, I'm certainly the guy who still want to captain that ship and make sure that uh, we all get to a place where we're incredible, productive members of society and incredible mentors uh, for these young cats trying to get on top of the podium and, and get to a place that we found very comfortable basking in every week or every every year. You're really, you're really, I, I can see it. You really care about these guys. And, and Absolutely. you really, you really shared a, a, a forever bond a, a, and forever. Yeah. I mean, I think so. I, you know, I, I mean, again, you know, my mom had five boys, man. So, so I'm not, so I'm used to being around men and, and testosterone and all of that. I'm also used to being a leader amongst them, you know, so the, so, so me, so, so the, the team was, the, the team was, uh, you know, that, that was, that was like child's play. It was normal. It was very normal for me you know, to give them all a hard time, to give them all a hard time uh, and, 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 and let them know that there's incredible expectations. And if you're a part of the team, we are not going to settle for, for, um, for anything less than gold. I told, I told, um, I think I told the team in 1994 in, in, um, in, uh, in, in Victoria at the, at the, at the Commonwealth games, I said, first of all, I should have been running the 100 meters where I would have won and broken the world record on Canadian soil. So when I did not get selected for the team because I was sick, I understood that. But when I came out in, uh, for the start of the relay, I said to Glenn Roy, I'm like, dude, I'm going to give you guys a 10 to 15 meter lead. And if we don't win gold, I'm fighting you guys on the track. Straight up. And I was dead serious. You weren't joking. I was yeah. not joking. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely not. When you look at your career and you serve as a mentor now to to many people, and both both on the track and, and off, and during your career you were a mentor, and you were quoted in in CanadianImmigrant.ca when asked about what it what it what it takes to be successful, everybody needs a mentor. Right. So how do you view like a good sort of mentor mentee relationship? You know what I I always I always tell people that. Uh, well, well, I mean, in, in my parents' or corporate speeches, you know, or, or workshops, board meetings, I always tell people to seek out the smartest people in whatever industry you're trying to be successful in and just have a conversation. Sometimes shut the hell up, just actually listen and see how they do things. And I've always met and, and had a fortune to either you know, meet incredible people or, or seek them out and just want to have a conversation, being in the same room as them. I've always said that I want to be the dumb guy in the room. I want to be able to, I want to be able to get in and absorb as much information as possible, you know? Uh, and so um, these are the, some of the mannerisms that I use to this day still. Um, there are some incredible business people that I know and I can pick up the phone, I can call them and I can discuss anything. Uh, there's some economists that I know. I can call them and I can talk about anything. Great media people that I know around the globe. Some of them, you know, like you, you've got some of the, like, the greatest people to ever do these things. Um, I can pick up the phone and I can call them. You know, when, when I can pick up the phone and call the prime minister, you know, or I can call, you know, whomever. I can, I can call any single person um, in any genre. Uh, then, then that's how it is that I see myself. So I continue to help people by letting them know that if they want to learn something, one, be prepared to learn. Two, I mean, reach out. And there's not a dumb question when you reach out to someone, but don't get in their way. What you got to do is learn from them by understanding what they do, understanding the mannerisms and the mechanics that it takes for them to be incredible at, 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 at what it is they do. I mean, I can pick up the phone and call someone uh, you know, it's one of the best bankers in, in, in the entire country and just find out from them how it is 
uh, you know, what are your opinions on things, right? You know, so my responsibility on the platform that I have is just to let people know some of the simple skills that I've learned over the years, which is always reach out to the people that, exactly. first of all, you got to be precise and disciplined. So reach out to the people that are exactly, uh, exactly what you want to be or, or how you want to be and listen carefully uh, if, they, if, if those people have, you know, have, can spare five minutes of their time, make sure that five minutes count for a lifetime. Yeah, amazing. And, and you had a, a legendary coach that, that you've mentioned also in Dan Pfaff. And w- what makes a, a good partnership or, or an ideal partnership between a coach and an athlete? You, you both excelled working together. Right. Well, listen, Dan, I, I mean, obviously, I'm going to say Dan is the greatest coach in the history of the world, because that's just obviously uh, my own resume will will say that. Uh, yeah. But I, I, but I will but I will tell you, I don't know anyone any one athlete, and I don't care what sport they're in, that's ever gone to Dan and never, um, and, and not improve. Now, okay. that's the true sign of like a Hall of Fame, you know, greatest of all time coach, right? Every single person, whether or not that person was coming to do dry land, it's a dry land hockey guy, whether or not they're coming from the prim, rugby premiership in Australia, Oh. Whether they're coming in from soccer, whether there's tons of NFL guys, and baseball, football. I'm just saying to you that you have the, you, you just have guys who just want to come in shape. Guys are running 11 seconds and be like, can I break 11 seconds? So Dan is that coach uh, that um, is, can, can customize his vision and, and customize uh, a written workout to make anyone improve, right? Dan would take you and bring you out there and whatever, like he'd you, say, you go and run your fastest time, then come with me. And then you'll learn some things in a very short period of time. And if you work and you do that, you're going to improve. So Dan is someone who probably is one of the smartest guys that I know. And also, he was also an incredible student. And he had, uh, uh, not, not, not was, Dan is an incredible, I spoke to Dan a couple of days ago, it was his birthday. Um, oh, yeah. So um, D- Dan is someone, like I am someone, you know, I'm a student of the sport. So I always asked a lot of questions. One of the greatest things about Dan is that if he does not know the answer, he'll say, I don't know the answer. Let me think about that and I'll get back to you. And believe me, after practice, he's either, re- remember, this is way before Google. So Dan is either getting this, uh, you know, an encyclopedia someplace and he has incredible network of coaches around the planet. He was going to call and he was going to go and get as much information as possible. So the next time I saw him, he would have an answer for my question. And so we had, so we were exchanging um, like intellectual academic details of what it was like to run. And I know people kind of go, yeah, you put one foot in front of the other. But there were, there, were, there, were, there were some of the simplest, basic things that you see in running, but you're thinking about it's, the, it's probably the most complicated technical thing to do in the middle of everyone, because everybody can run. We all know that. But when you're the greatest runner and every human being on the planet can run, then it does take an incredible teacher and, you know, obviously an incredible talent. So Dan is one of those coaches for me that uh, no matter what, uh, no, first of all, no matter where you put him, he's going to survive. And no matter what, he's going to offer you the greatest advice uh, that he possibly can. And that advice, personally for me, obviously, I'm very biased. That advice is the greatest advice you're going to get from anybody else in the world. Wow. Incredible. And and, and we talked to Bruni and, and Bruni, Bruni said very similar things about him. Just an amazing Better. coach. He better. <laughs> he did. Oh, he was he was uh, very very uh, uh, high on Dan Pfaff. Yeah, well, we, I invited Bruni to come train with us. Absolutely, I invited Bruni to come down and train with us, uh, especially after 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 I ruptured my Achilles. And Bruni learned so much. I mean, just just one. You got to be around winners. You got to have a you got to have a little bit of a chip. 
you can't, you know, you, you, you got to show up and you have to have that, uh, that, that mindset. And like I said, I changed the mindset of the entire team in 94 uh, when I became the fastest uh, on the team. And, and, and so uh, going forward, having that and then having Dan as part of the team and, you know, having our physio and training facility, uh, that's why we had such incredible results over those years. Awesome. Look at looking back at, at, at your career, Donovan. Uh, even before your sprinting success, you were successful in a number of uh, business ventures, which which you know, marketing uh, properties and and apparel, and 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 you're successful in many areas today. What are some of the common things that helped you in your athletic career that that help you today with with your business ventures and 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 in, in your giving back in in, you know, in charitable, philanthropic sort of areas? Well, you know what? I, I think that the, 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 the characteristics um, to achieve success are all the same things. Okay. Uh, you know, one, uh, you must learn about what it is that you're trying to do. Learn about your product, whether that product is that uh, you're trying to be a stockbroker, you're trying to, um, you know, be the fastest man in the world. Uh, you know, I think that you need to uh, attach yourself to the people that are already incredible at it and learn from them. So find yourself a good coach. Uh, the support system is still extremely incredible. You need to have, I mean, like Glenroy said, you need to have people that you can depend on, people that you can trust and someone that can help you if you're having a bad day and someone's gonna help you along that way. Uh, you know, and, 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 and probably more importantly, one, you make a commitment to yourself that you're gonna learn, uh, understand what discipline is all about, you know, also understand that you're focused and if you don't have passion for it, then you shouldn't be there. You know, I, my passion is winning. My passion is successful uh, or my passion is, is, is in being a success in whatever I'm doing. So you, you, you mixed all of those things together and then you kind of understand what it is that's required for you to go there. You know, again, those are, those are some of the simple characteristics. Certainly there's a lot more. Um, you know, training, uh, training, whether you're on the track or in the boardroom or whatever it is that you're doing uh, is very important. Yeah. Uh, but you have to be passionate about it. And, 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 as, and also remember, um, especially in sport or in anything for that matter, is a 24, it's a 24 hour a day choice that you've made. So you have to be passionate about something. It, it, it's a 24 hour a day commitment. You know, so you eat it, sleep it. I mean, you do you do everything for it, whatever that commitment is. And in order for you to understand um, how to be successful, you have to live and breathe it. Donovan is just so rich here with 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 your wisdom and. and you know, you come from Jamaica, which is known for its amazing sprinting, and and uh, from your time in 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 your athletic career and beyond, um, really seemed to help and and help to usher in a new area era of sprinting, where it became possible and maybe even expected for others to to do the same. So, how do you view creating a culture, really of excellence, with leaving the legacy, the idea of legacy? What does that mean to you, and and how do you build that? Well, you know what? I mean, I was blessed and humbled to be in a position to 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 um, to influence a, a lot of people. Yeah. And so, my concern um, when I was competing and after was not necessarily just about track and field. I mean, I, you know, uh, I've met journalists um, that that are inspired by what it is that they saw me do and also hear me speak after. Um, you know, I'm inspired by guys like Drake, who are, you know, who's, you know, who, who's from Canada, proud to be from Canada, but also is a global star. I mean, he's like, you know, no, I'm not just here to to be the best rapper in Toronto. I want to be, I want to be the greatest artist and brand ambassador across the planet. So, I mean, you know, you see some of these hockey player guys. You see some some of these kids now that are playing NCAA basketball that have gone on to play in like in the NBA, like, you know, Steve Nash is definitely one of those guys, you know, hockey is, is not across the planet. It's certainly popular in, in a few countries, but you see that, uh, you know, guys are here that, that, uh, that have uh, uh, the limitless thoughts in what their ability should be, you know? So I was in a space where I could influence everybody. It came from sport. It came from track and field, but it was, I mean, I knew that 
the world pauses to watch the 100 meters every four years, that will never end, you know, and, and we know that, mm -hmm. that that's, going, that's, that's the leading news on every single uh, media platform on the planet. Um, you know, so I knew how big that was. So I recognized that I had to use that platform to make sure that anyone that was watching uh, or listening, um, you know, un understand that, that they um, had the ability to do whatever it is that they want to do. And it wasn't just about sports. So to influence a young crop of athletes or, or, or business people or musicians or whatever, you know, listen, I'm blessed uh, that, you know, people have said that, um, that they have attached me to, 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 to this, but my, but my attitude has always been the same. I'm a, always a glass is half full kind of guy. I'll always um, influence and motivate people to do better than themselves, than, than what, even what it is that they, um, you know, have put in front of themselves. I, I'm always pushing people to be better. And so, yeah, for the platform, man, I just want to ensure that whomever was an earshot or, or, or visual shot um, throughout my career and after, uh, they know that they have the ability to, to do whatever they need to do and be very confident and, be, and talk about it, talk about working hard, talk about being a winner. I mean, do that stuff. It doesn't, and, and it doesn't really matter for me. I mean, you know, regardless of some of the naysayers, some of the people that, you know, that might have said, I, you know, I, I might have said some things that I shouldn't have said and all of those stuff. I mean, at the end of the day, it's 2021 right now. And I addressed racism, uh, you know, in 1996. So, you know, a lot of people back then said there was no racism uh, in Canada. And I'm like, you must be out of your mind, you fools. You know, I'm like, you don't get to talk about racism. You need to be listening to the people who are racialized. And this is, this is you know, 24 years ago. So, so again, you know, I, you know, I had a platform and I want to make sure that I use that for good. That's amazing. And, and my audience has been asking me to talk to you uh, for, for a while now. It's obvious why from lessons on, on greatness to mindset, to team, to coaching uh, and to, to mentorship. And you've learned so much from mentors and we've been able to, to be mentees to you and just so thankful and allowing us into your mind and your mindset and into your world just, just for a few minutes. And, and I learned so much and I know my audience will learn so much and just sincerely thank you so much, Donovan. Well, listen. Thank you for having me, and I guess I'm the fourth of of of, uh, of the, uh, as it should be. I'm the anchor. I'm You're the anchor. The anchor. I'm, I'm 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 very glad that um, that you had an opportunity to talk to the fellas, uh, and and certainly, man. You know what? Shouts out to um, to them and and uh, and to your audience. Thank you for supporting me throughout my career, and and thank you for continual uh, support today. And and let's hope that we can. We can uh, cheer on the young generation of leaders, uh, whether on and off the track, we can cheer on this young generation um, of, of new leaders and, and future legends uh, for them to, to, to get to a place where the world is an incredible equal place uh, in the very near future. What an amazing interview. I had so much fun talking to, to Donovan and and I, I appreciated so many things about him, how he challenged his teammates, be, be ready or we'll find someone else, just straightforward and, and, and be excellent at what you do. And, and then if, if you don't win the Olympic Games, I'm, I'm fighting you in the track. And I remember at the time I, you know, I laughed and, and I was unsure whether he was serious, but he was, and I could see that. And it was, it was pretty amazing how he, how he kind of fostered excellence and, and amongst his, his team, you know, called himself the Michael Jordan and, and just, I loved it. And, you know, my favorite moment was with the clip from Glenroy Gilbert in, in my interview with, 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 with Glenroy. And we caught a glimpse there of the human inside of the competitor and how he really views his teammates as 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 close teammates and and, and friends and it was very it was very cool to see that and, and then he talks about uh, mentors and that was refreshing to hear it's e easy to say that we should you know spend time with people and, and learn from people that are smarter than we are but there's something else that that i don't think honestly is emphasized probably enough and 
he says it so so succinctly shut up and listen and it's so refreshing to hear that because sometimes we're i mean if if we're honest with ourselves i don't think always we really do want to learn from other people and we're willing to just shut up and listen as he says and i and i and i, I really like that about him he really carefully uh, truly cared about his teammates and and he used his fame as a, as a platform speaking about racism i respect that about him so much and if, if you look on his social media he uses fame to, to to speak out and to help others and he broke so many barriers in in so many ways so and i've interviewed all four now of the the 1996 four by 100 meter relay team uh so that's glenroy gilbert donovan bailey bruni sir and robert esme and and as as i look back all all men all, all four men broke through their own barriers and i'm grateful to all of them for for their insights and and their stories and their amazing stories of of camaraderie and, and how they how they broke through those barriers to to reach you know further limits and just amazing uh, and i'm darwin with the evolution of leaders and i help future awesome leaders break through barriers to fulfill their purpose and i hope you enjoyed this interview as much as i did to speak to donovan i, I speak and coach and i would love to hear from you i'm at evolutionofleaders.com please like subscribe and share make sure you get one percent better today take care